Welcome back, one and all. It's uh, we're back for another another edition of the MMA Huddle podcast. Here, myself and John are ready to break down a a really kind of interesting card with a a lot of interesting fights and a, a kind of a little bit of a British European feel to it. With UFC 228 from the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Uh, coming off UFC Lincoln at the weekend there, moving into Cage Warriors and Invicta 31 this weekend, which has got great fights. So um, nice to see a bit of uh, MMA going on in between the UFC cards. The reason we're doing this on a Thursday night instead of Sunday, because I'm going home to see my mama. So nothing's going to stop me from going home and see my mama. So I had to get this out early, get it done. We had to get something done for for UFC 228 and get something in order. So we're a, we're a little bit more than a, a week to uh, nine days or seven to nine days out before the fight, but we had to get something done because we can't not uh, get something done for that. So uh, before we start, before we head over to John, as always, if you can comment, subscribe. We're at 270 for subscribers. The goal was 300 by the end of the year. We think we could get there before then. So just hit that little little button up in the top right-hand corner. Say subscribe and you will be here. Uh, we will be here every week with predictions. John does interviews. So on, so on. There's stuff out for Invicta. There's stuff out for uh, Cage Warriors. Probably when you view this, it'll maybe be by that. But you can go back and watch it. Um, so yeah, John, we're going to get into UFC 228, how's things with you? You said to me two seconds ago you had a short week, you lucky bastard, so uh, yeah, how's things? Oh, you don't get it in Scotland, do you? You don't get the bank holiday weekend, because uh -huh. you get a different time, so bank holiday weekend, can't go wrong with that, can we? Let's be honest, love it, short week and then straight into, like you say, absolute cage warriors and victor, loving it, some awesome matchups. Uh, there will be the Craig White interview to tie in with the UFC 228 for you, the people to check out. Uh, that dude went from Neil Magny co-main event to Diego Sanchez on this card. That's, that's some uh, listed fighters to go and make your two, first two UFC fights with. But uh, yeah, mate, I'm all good, bro. I just can't wait to talk about this fight card because there's some very good bouts, man. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for so much for subscribing so far and hope we get more. Yeah. So that's where that's where we're kind of going. We're, we're coming in now. We've had kind of really a, a break of such like four four of the last six weeks off. Once we get round to this event next Saturday, so we're ready for a big run of events. Kind of after this, to go to Russia, which looks a, a pretty phenomenal fight card for fight night card heading over there. So uh, we are going to have lots of uh, content coming your way. So get subscribing. Get interacting and uh, let's try and make this channel bigger. And we know it's going to get bigger because uh, we're putting in all the right things to make the channel bigger. So uh, just help us along the way and uh, show us your support. So we're going to get started off. Like I say, you said this it was a really, really good main card. It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit of a weird card. Mm. Uh, just with some of the fights they've got on. Like I say, the European kind of British feel to it, which I actually quite like. I'm looking forward to it. Um, but we're going to start off with a guy who fights out of Texas, so a hometown boy and Jeff Neal facing off against uh, a guy I really like watching, Frank Camacho. So you can set us off here and get us, um, get us going with the breakdowns. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't enjoy watching Frank Camacho fight. He is... Yeah. Just entertainment. He's, he's, <clears throat> you, you know what's going to happen when you fight him. Uh, you and and the thing is, Jeff Neal's got some legit hands. That dude has got boxing credentials. He is not someone to mess around with. Uh, so I think uh, Frank, his his striking, he is. A, I I would describe it like a berserker. So it's not necessarily a precision like Jeff has. So this is where this fight could really be split up. You know, hometown boy. Does it affect him? Does the pressure get to him? All the people there that'll be there to watch him. Smart move, sticking him first fight in the card. Hopefully, get a few numbers in, uh, like locals to, to to watch him, so that that will help uh, fill fill the, the place up a bit. Uh, but yeah, for Jeff, it's a uh, you know fought Brian Camozzi on his debut after Dana White contenders, and he looked pretty good. Like pretty Brian Camozzi didn't really do much anyway in the UFC when he when he rocked up. Uh, I think he more had his brother's yeah. kind of history, this support, which doesn't always doesn't always help like it didn't there. But 
Jeff did exactly what he needed to do. He went in there and put a stellar performance in. Uh, I, I worry about Frank with the conditioning side of things. You know, when it gets to lots of rounds, how does he fare there? Not great. Like, is it because he just puts everything into those shots? Um, I'm going to go Jeff in this fight, folks. I think the crisper boxing that he has, I think he might use a bit more footwork to get out there. If I'm Frank, I'm going to want to close him down, get him against that cage, and just keep it tight. You know, just just break quickly, quick flurry of punches, clinch back up. That's Frank's way for me to win the fight, to keep it close, to land a heavy shot, to maybe rock Jeff. But I think Jeff is going to be the bigger octagon as well because the pay-per-view card will have a slight advantage with that, using the footwork and the range. And I think, you know, just good combinations, you know, straight punches, maybe end one or two with a hook and then and just hit, uh, kind of angle off. And I think that will get Jeff the win. Frank's Pretty tough cookie, so I think he could maybe take the punches. I'll, I'll go decision, Jeff, but I think it's going to be a cracking fight because I find it hard to not have Frank Camacho on a good fight. Yeah, like I say, it's um, I, I like the match. Like you said, um, sorry, the first fight of the night, getting some maybe some locals in the door and getting that crowd kind of going early and popping for the, the, the guys who are fighting out of Texas because there is a few of them fighting on mm. the card here yeah. uh, and early as well, which is good. Um, going off what you were saying there, the big thing that sticks out to me is Camacho's uh, gas tank and his condition. Every fight that goes out the window is because he throws everything into every shot. There's never usually too much variety. You know the shots that are coming at you. But it's still hard to get out of the way of some of those shots. You've seen in the majority of those fights, um, he's just a tough, tough cookie. In saying that, I went back and watched... A couple of his fights outside the UFC, and he has been knocked out before. He's been like hit down with one shot and put out as well. So it's kind of surprising that he's been in the UFC and he's fought a couple of hard hitters, and he's not really been put out as well. Like Damian Brown, Lee Jing Liang can crack, um, but the guys, no matter if he wins the fight or loses the fight, the guy is in great fight. So if you're going to be watching 228, you don't want to miss the fi first fight because this guy's going to bring fireworks. To me. Neil's a little bit more, the more polished guy. Um, I think he's got more. He's definitely got more tools to win the fight. Um, but he might instigate a fight with Camacho here and maybe fight uh, a little bit stupidly and maybe engage with Camacho. And that's something you can't really do because with that guy, if he catches you clean, he can hurt you really, really badly. Um, I thought Drew Dober, him and the Drew Dober fight was a great fight as well. That really could have went either way um, too. For me, Jeff Neal is just a more confident pick. Not ruling out Camacho because, like you said and I say, the guy's got some power. He cracks, takes one shot, he can put you down. I don't see too much else from him, though. You, you said about potentially pushing him against the cage, and I can see that. But I think that Neil will push back by threatening maybe takedowns, which is something I don't think Camacho defends awfully, awfully well. Um, but for the, the most part, I think Neil's a more cleaner striker, um, and just will put things together a little bit easier. I can maybe see him taking this to the ground uh, and maybe find a submission. So I'm going to go um, Neil. I'll probably go via a, a stoppage, but it won't be a, a. It could be a submission, but I think it'll be more a TKO, maybe late in two into round three. But like I say, Camacho's hard to, to stop. So I'm kind of going out on a limb there by picking him to win via stoppage. So Jeff Neil's the pick there. Moving on, we have uh, this is this. This one's going to be interesting. Ryan Benoit against Roberto Little Fury Sanchez. And love flyweight fights. There's a couple of guys on here that I think they're good to watch, but I think they're very good in certain aspects. And uh, I think in, in different parts of the game here. And that there's definitely some holes in both guys there that each other can kind of um, expose a little bit. Starting off with Roberto Sanchez, he's a he's a guy that obviously I think the majority of us knew about um, before he went to UFC. Oh, my page has disappeared. There it is there. Um, and the guy's a ground fighter. Plain and simple. He looks to get the fight there. His technique on the feet is shocking. His, he's, he's pretty much, I'm saying shocking. His technique is pretty non-existent, to be honest with you. He's a guy that looks to clinch, looks to take you down and looks to use his jiu-jitsu, which he is very good at, and he's definitely, you can see that he puts in a lot of work in that, and like he's, he's an 8-1 flyweight, so, and I think he's um, quit his full-time job to 
kind of pursue and get himself a little bit better, which is it's quite a scary thing to be doing. Um, I think he's 31, 32 years old, so that's something that's quite a kind of scary thought. But came in there against Bopo Morales, um, got caught in the first round, and then in the last fight, he caught Joby Sanchez with a with a rear naked choke. And he's one of those guys, if he gets your back, and Ryan Benoit has shown that you can get his back, if he gets it one time, I think he puts out Ryan Benoit. So um, when you look at Ryan Benoit, the guy... I think too much credit maybe on the Sergio Pettis win. Now he caught Pettis, there's no doubt about it. Um and he's well, got the power there obviously. Well you Hello. you you froze you froze there, oh. bro. Do you wanna switch yeah here we go. Oh good. Yeah, you're back. There you go. Go on, yeah. bro. So you said uh, this is uh, the Pettis fight you said that yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think he gets I think a lot of people give him a lot of credit for the, the Pettis victory and fair enough, he he beat a top five guy who is now a top five guy. At then he wasn't a top five um, guy, but he's a guy that trades wins and losses. So he's coming off that win over Ashkan Mokhtarian, who's not not good. Brennan Moreno lost to him, beat Freddy Serrano. Serrano had some good skills with his grappling and his wrestling, but outside of that, he wasn't. That was a close fight actually. That could have went either way. Ben the win, they lost via rear naked choke. So and he's lost. His last two times he's lost via submission, he's lost via rear naked choke. So you can tell what guy's going to be going for what, and what guy doesn't want the other guy to, to get what he wants. So um, he wants, Sanchez wants to get this to the ground. One time I think is all it's going to take to get the back of this guy. Sometimes you get fighters that just don't know how to defend certain aspects of that and just drown. And I think he's one of those fighters that can go down there and he drowns in uh, the pressure of having someone on his back. And some people... They're really, really good. They'll, they'll stay calm, they'll relax, they'll look for a way out, they'll wait for the right time to explode. To me, when I see Ryan uh, Benoit, he completely freaks himself out and he just le he does the worst thing possible and he just leaves that neck open a little bit. And you don't even need a full choke to put this guy out. But when it comes to the feet, better technique, more speed, more variety. He's miles ahead of what Roberto Sanchez is. So, striker v grappler. I think I think it's going to be close. Um, I do see Roberto Sanchez getting takedowns. It's whether he can find his way to those positions where he, he can catch submissions. I think he can. So I'm going to pick him via a submission. I think he's going to find that, that, uh, that neck again via a guillotine, a rear naked choke. I'm going to pick Roberto Sanchez to win here. How do you see it? One problem I have uh, with Benoit is he is a flyweight, like we said before. Flyway to agile, quick. He just plods on his feet. Yeah. I, I just can't get my head around it. He walks around like he's 50 stone. It's so weird. I'm like that. And it's not like he's he, he's plodding to base his feet to crack power shots. Because even his shots aren't that powerful. Um, you know, like the Macteria fight, he nearly got knocked out. You know, he got cracked early on. Like, because. The, pro the reason is, is because he's so flat-footed, he can't react in time. So the problem he's got here is, he's going to be the same, walk in, plod along. Roberto's just going to be like, oh, thank you very much. Flat-footed opponent, I'm going to shoot him for a takedown. He'll be too slow to move out of the way, and I'll get my takedown. Or, at the worst, he's going to at least get his arms around the legs and up against the cage and finish it from there. For me, I just can't understand. Like, it's not like he's conserving energy. If you're a flyweight, you must have a hell of a gas tank, probably, because you're not that big to, and there's not much to carry around. I would love to see Ryan Benoit be more active, more moving, more angles. Just, but he's not. He, he's he's shown that he's got too much of a flaw in his stand-up. Even though he's got more to offer, his flaw is too great to be ignored and I think like you said I think he's going to get taken down I think he's going to get choked out and I think it's going to be over uh, I, I'm, I'm going with you I'm Sanchez submission I think the, the opportunity for the takedown is there you know Bonoy's one win one lose one win one lose one can't get consistent I've got to go with Sanchez uh, for the finish bro uh, that, that, I, I don't see going any other way yeah, like I think it's going to be, it could be, it, could, it has the potential to be really close. So it's one of those, I'm kind of 60 40 on Sanchez's side. So you've gone not again, much bro. between them. You've gone again. Oh. The internet's been a bugger. 
Yeah, and then he's going to bitch. So, um, yeah, I just think it's going to be a close fight. I prefer picking Sanchez over uh, Ryan Benoit yeah. here. So, moving on to the women's 135 pound division with Irene Aldana. This could be this potentially be a good fight against Lucy Pujolova. Uh, how do you see that one going down? Well, it was meant to be obviously. Aldana was meant to have a different opponent previously uh, uh, with Betch Carrera, but then Betch had to pull out with the injury. For, but she's having a, she's having surgery again on her eye, so you know, you know, I, all, I, all I think about is Bisping. You know what happened with him and his eyes, and you think, you know, as much as the fight game is something you love to do, yeah, they, people don't won't care about your Betch in ten years' time. You know, if you lose your if your eye gets, it, it's just a fight game. It's brutal. It's ruthless. It, I hope that if it gets looked into and and they're told look you're okay fingers crossed but anyway besides the fight this one is more um this is a bit of a tougher fight for aldana and um, but not as tough as it is as it should be i think this is going to be perfect for her because i think lucy's going to stand up with her uh she's going to trade with her but the problem with lucy is she takes hits she gets hit you know she she'll she, she's got a tough head don't get me wrong she's got a head like coconut but she gets cracked she gets taken down when she's on her back she's not overly superly active she's also susceptible as well if you get her if she gets you down she's actually gets caught in submission attempts way too often like way too much like she had um sarah marais got her in so many i i can't believe she didn't get finished by her and um, i think aldana if this it's a kind of good fight for her to get things you know get put on a good performance get herself solidified you're frozen again there bro oh your camera's gone go on do it again uh, yeah good? there we go yeah we're good again uh, we'll just punch skype in a dick now yeah and um, so basically yeah i think this is more of a pref uh, i think the aldon is a little bit just too better well-rounded for for lucy i think she's got a crisper strike in her angles i think she's just used her striking better on the ground i think if aldana wanted to she could go into this downstairs and just really put a beating on lucy because lucy just gets pounded on the ground with ground and pound she takes it pretty like she just takes it on the chin like she thinks it's going to help her i don't think for me lucy's not active enough to get away from stuff I'm going to go with um, Aldana. Um, I'm going to go with... I reckon she can get a finish. I, I really do. I think it's uh, uh, the kind of fight that she can get in there, get a finish, uh, like a TKO on a ground with a bit of ground and pounds. I, I, I do think she can get a finish here, probably like second, third round. Yeah. I'm I'm struggling with this one, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I've always liked Aldana when, when she was mm. coming through in Becta. I thought she was a really good prospect. I think we've kind of seen where she's at in the UFC kind of side of things where the opponents that she's lost to but she is coming off her first win in the UFC and she I like her technique on the feet I think that's one thing that definitely stands out as being really really good with her and Alexa Grass so it's just good technique she's got some power she's got some leverage there as well um but the rest like some of her fight IQ is a little bit baffling to me mm. I thought she could have finished Bernardo I know she won the fight but she did get taken down and Bernardo is that fighter who's really good at taking you down but not really doing much else with it but uh, yeah I like Pujolova um, I like watching Pujolova's fights because she's so aggressive mm. she comes forward she doesn't take a back step she puts uh, puts herself in bad positions she usually comes through that like the Moraes fight she did that uh, the, the Morris fight sorry and uh, she put herself in so many stupid positions which is a lack of fight iq first of all you, you can't be doing that but she is still a young fighter but she's extremely what i like about it as well she's calling out goals she's calling out asking yeah. she just wanted to fight that's it yeah. she's like, i just want to fight and i like that too yeah she's fight she's going to win a lot of fights i think she's going to lose a lot of fights um but she's going to be entertaining to watch and that's something that not every one of the female fighters that you, you watch is, is like that, but she is one that you're going to get your money's worth when she fights, win or lose. So, uh, And ultimately, she could have been 3-0 in the UFC as well. That fight against Lena Landsberg was... She beat the piss out of Lena Landsberg. She bloodied her face up really badly. Yeah. Um, so, And you can maybe see some of the aspects of that fight happening here where she can maybe push Aldana against the fence and unload with strikes and the clinch. And To me, I think Aldana's just a little bit more... It's, like I say, I'm finding it tough to pick a winner here. I think that she's a little bit better on the feet. She's got a little bit more to her. But 
Lucy Pujol over just throws and keeps on throwing. Mm. If she keeps on throwing, there'll be openings for Aldana to maybe hit a straight down. If she can use her straight shots really well and catch her with those strikes, then she could potentially um, maybe put Pujol over down. But she, she's shown nothing um, when taking those shots coming forward that ever really stops her. A couple of fights that I've seen Pujol over, she's got a little bit of a ground, a little bit of a ground game. She's got some submissions on her record. It is against girls with not the greatest records. Um, but still, she's got a little bit of a game down there. So she might potentially want to look for that um, part of the game later on in the fight or whatever. I think for me, it's just going to be Aldana. Mm. Uh, I want to pick Pujolova because I think she's a live, live girl in this fight. And Aldana is, I think, her ceiling. We've seen her ceiling in the UFC. She's going to beat very beatable fighters and I don't know whether Pujolova is like that but uh, something's pushing me towards Aldana in this fight I'm going to pick her via decision I do think she comes through some hairy parts of that fight um, but for me I'm going to pick Aldana via decision yeah I, I think it's just a. I think if Pujolova was a couple of fights in like a progression yeah. different fight but I just think it's a good it's, it's a more ideal time right now to fight her if you're Aldana yeah bro you're right yeah. So moving on, we've got one of the stalwarts of the UFC in the last ten years, I want to say, and Jim Miller, who he might be coming close to to one of his last fights in the UFC, and I think he's I say the guy with the most fights in the UFC now, Jim Miller. I think he might be close close to there. Close, because you have like you had T Bow, who was tight. He was right behind it. Then you had GSP's yeah. number one. Isn't GSP number one and Bisping number two, or is they both joint first? Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I think Jim Miller's like just like, and Donald Her, Cerrone, and all, they're Joe, all just like knocking on the door. I think it's Joe Lowe's on. Maybe Joe yeah. Lowe's on, actually. Um, but this guy is one of the guys who's been around for the longest time, fought the who's who mm -hmm. of the lightweight division for many, many years, and he faces off against Alex White. And this could be potentially a kind of change in the guard of the young guys coming through, because I think that Alex White has some skills. Mm. But this is probably the biggest name that I want to say that Alex White's probably faced. Probably just with the amount of fights that one guy's had in the UFC and uh, the, the opponents that he's faced and yeah. uh, so on. Coming off a loss, a very kind of close loss to James Krause, where I thought he showed some of his skills, but he did get nullified a little bit by what James Krause has. And I wrote off, kind of, well, did I write off? Maybe I wrote off James Krause a little bit before yeah. last week. Before we did. Oh, we did. <laughs> yeah, and that sometimes that's. Sometimes you, that's looking into fights too much. You, you should be looking at fights. And I was looking at him coaching. He shouldn't really be doing that. I shouldn't be doing that. I've been looking at fights for a long time. But it happens sometimes. And you, you, sometimes if that comes off and he loses and he, he doesn't come back, then, then you're, you're, you're made to look a genius. And then sometimes you're made to look a fool. And that was the case with James Krause. Because he dominated majority, pretty much all that fight with Alves last week. Um, wins over Lobov, Mitch Clark. I love Lobov just because he's a cool guy, but it's not really saying much. Mitch Clark's not even in the sport anymore. There's the decision as well with Lobov as well, so it wasn't. A, it's yeah. not like he's stopping him. Yeah, and he took he took Lobov down in that fight. He didn't know what to stand, which is fair enough. We know what Lobov's like on the feet. He can, he's dangerous at all times. Alex White's not going to take down Jim Miller in this fight because Miller's crafty, crafty on the ground, um, and will catch him with, if he if he decides to play with Jim Miller on the ground, he will get caught in a submission. So predominantly, he's going to look to outwork Jim Miller on the feet, and he ha he has definitely with his hands, he's definitely got an advantage in this fight um, over the fifteen minutes as well. I think that Jim Miller's got nasty leg kicks, and we've seen that in the Dustin Poirier fight. So that's something that he has to. I still think he needs to implement a little bit and uh, look to try and get this fight to the ground because I still think that's where he's super super dangerous, and he he can catch you with with a lot of submissions and a lot of things down there. But this guy's coming off four, a, four losses in a row, and you've seen the progression. Really, Pori... When you go back, actually, the, the, when over Joe Lozo and the said, yeah, I got a perfect time because he was trying to make 155 when he was never going to make 155. But then you've seen, like, the, the kind of... It's funny to look at a fighter and who he's facing. Pori... Pettis, Trinaldo, Hooker, now you're getting the lowest of those five guys and Alex White there. And if he can't win this fight, I don't see much 
much looking and maybe sticking around. Um, five fight losing streaks doesn't doesn't really keep you around all too much. I was surprised last week that Jake Ellenberger was kept around with, with lost eight of his last ten fights in the UFC. So it's hard to let these older guys go because they've given so much to the company and so on and so on. Many good fights. To me, I think that. I don't think he's going to find a way to make uh, take this to the ground, and that means that Alex White's going to have the advantage on the feet. So I think Alex White is just going to mix it up in the feet, and I think that he's going to beat him uh, via decision here. So, so yeah. Ooh, like it, and like you say, mm. on the ground, Jim Miller's a black belt as well, and he is a ninja on the ground. Like he can slap on some fantastic submissions. He did show in over the years. He did have a bit of a tough, a tough chin. Uh, and like you said, that list of names there, I'm not being funny. A lot of guys have a lot of trouble with all four of them guys. Yeah. A lot of trouble. You know, there's... And Alex White, like you say, he's the younger kind of name of all of them. I, I would not be surprised, though, if Jim Miller says goodbye after this, even win or lose. Yeah. I think a lot of these guys have to start looking in that kind of way, like these, like like your Jake Allenbergers, your Jim Millers, your Joe Lozon, you know, the, the guys that have been around for and fought for so long that maybe it's time to just knock it on the head as, as guys like that. And I think Alex White might prove that. I think, you, you know, with that boxing, you know, the, just tagging Jim Miller, just picking away at Jim. As long as you just pick, don't stand too close, like you say, he can jump in, clinch, inside outside leg trip get you down to the ground and then you you know you're in a b spot of bother trying to f stop him getting submissions and just no no to jim miller on top just trying to whack, slap on a guillotine or whatever he wants to put on a kimura no thanks and um, i'm looking forward to seeing jim miller back as i think it, I, i'm always going to be a fan of jim miller i know what he's going to do He's never going to back down. He's never going to be in rubbish. Like Jim Miller doesn't do boring. He just likes to fight. So I'll always love Jim Miller for that. And he's always going to be one of them guys that you just look at the, some of the fights he's had, win or lose, you just know he went in there full tilt. And, oh, God, that Joe Lowe's on bloodbath. Oh, my gosh. Um, but, yeah, mate, I, I think in my heart I'm saying Jim because when you go old school, bro, like you – you just can't, it's hard to, it's hard to say no but I think Alex as long as you just I think can keep it up I think this new breed coming through I think Alex can help that and I think he can I don't want to I want to say decision because I don't want to say he can stop him because it hurts to say it so I'll say decision win and Mr. Alex White yeah no it's it's like that's one of the things I, I'm quite bad for us nostalgia with fighters I'm a fan it is hard and it's probably going to show most maybe in this next fight coming up here. So moving on to the featured fight of the UFC Fight Pass prelims for UFC 228. We have the nightmare, the dream, the crazy, yes, dude. Just a, one of the most, uh, let me see what you say. Maybe a little bit controversial with the fact that some of his wins are a little bit iffy sometimes. But the guy is one of the, the like, when... The original Ultimate Fighter is Diego Sanchez. He was the first one to win that show. He's the last guy still here. Maybe he shouldn't still be here, but he is here, and he's 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 got himself an opponent here in the Thundercat, Craig White. Who's this must be a dream matchup for someone like Craig White, who's came in short and was against Neil Magny. That's tough in itself. I had to make a crazy weight cut to get down. But then your second opponent, you get Diego Sanchez. It's uh, it's pretty shit hot if I'm Craig White right now. So uh, you're going to lead off this one. How do you see things going? Okay, so I'm going to be unbiased. Just put it out there, folks. I'm going to be unbiased and give it I'm honest. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not so, going to hand up already. I'm not. <laughs> so here is an unbiased view. Okay, this fight is. I think it's a bit harsh for Craig White to get... Like, Neil Magny's fair enough because it's short notice, all that. But then he gets Diego Sanchez. I'm like, there's other dudes in that welterweight division in the lower ranks that you could have happily put Craig White with to help get him kind of settled in the UFC. He did you guys a huge solid, cut a lot of weight. I'm, like, it's semi like a good solid to him to let him fight someone like Diego Sanchez. But I'd still like... If I'm... I'd like to get my, you know... 
get my foot put in the UFC and build myself up. I kind of feel like um, I kind of like Eric Anders, where you kind of just went, like went from zero to a hundred. Right, you're fighting five round fight with uh, Little Machida pretty quick. It was, it, 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 in perspective, um, but I've made Craig White big guy, long guy. And um, weight cut's gone fine. He's not having to cut, kill himself this time to make weight. He's done it progressively. Lots of time to prep for someone like Diego Sanchez. Uh, and the thing is, though, Diego, semi kind of predictable. Um, you know what you're going to get with Diego. And the, the, if I'm Craig, all I want to do, the first thing I want to do is try and tag Diego as soon as possible. Because Diego has that standard kind of flips. Like It's almost like, comes in, game plan. As soon as you tag him and clip him and annoy him, he, game plan just goes. He just doesn't care, and he just goes into like that rage. Now, don't get me wrong. I love watching it, but I think this: if you're if you're Craig, you want to try and get that early, then use the space that you've got in that octagon. You know, move around a lot, angles, keep Diego. You know, missing, keep him on the end of your punches, on the end of your kicks. Uh, don't bother going to the ground with it. But the thing is, Craig is not a guy that backs down. They're both of them just like the fight. You know, Craig will take a hit and he'll just stay in there. Craig uses elbows really well. And after what we saw with Mr. Brown and Sanchez fight, I think I'm worried about this for Diego Sanchez. I think if he closes distance down, Craig White can start to land some elbows on him. And we know what the Diego chin's like these days, especially after he got his soul taken away from him by Matt Brown. But Diego, again, veteran, knows what he's doing, uses the wrestling, can use the grappling on top to kind of just keep Craig down. Even though Craig's very good on the back, he can, you know, good long legs, Triangles, arm bars, all that good stuff. Uh, I worry though with the um, kind of experience level that Diego has, he can maybe outthink Craig in certain aspects of it. But ultimately, I'm gonna go with Craig White. I just like, do you know when Jim Miller and Alex White was uh, kind of changing the guard? I see the same thing here. I think that uh, you know Craig White's been a rat had a Fair, quite a few fights, folks. He's not like a young kid. He's not like new to a sport. He's been in the sport a while, had a few fights. But I just think Craig could do it. I think he's just not as battle-worn as Diego is. And, you know, welterweight, Diego's not... Diego probably walks around, I would say, not high, not that high of 170. Makes a difference. And I think we're going to see it here. And I think Craig's going to win. I I'm going to be putting it out there, mate. I want to stick my neck. I want to go with Craig White here. Yeah, I can... <laughs> Look, let's not be around the bush here with Diego Sanchez. He is at, like we said, he was the, the ultimate fighter of the first show. He's the last guy that's still kicking around. And he's one of those guys who's probably taken as much damage as 10 of those guys that ever took in the UFC Ventures. Um, but it's probably one of the most exciting guys that's ever come out of there. Just by, But in saying that, some of his fights, I think it's just the crowd hyping him up. He's won fights that he clearly... <laughs> he really didn't deserve to win <laughs> um, and that, I'm fine saying that as a Diego fan and like I was happy when he won those fights so when you go back and watch them you're like ooh uh, <laughs> but with Diego here like Will Awaits never been the best place for him except he on his career um, which was yonks ago yeah. but it is one of those fights here where it's either going to be Craig White really exposing Diego for possibly being done or it could be Diego Sanchez exposing Craig White with the experience that he's got and just how to fight, how to win like a 15-minute fight. And that's maybe something that Craig White's not really used to. If you look at his record, he's got a lot of wins in there via stoppage. There's not, and He either gets stopped or he stops you. He's a blood and guts kind of fighter. And that's pretty much what Diego Sanchez is. Blood and guts, ready to go out there and put it all on the line. Um have to talk about Diego's chin, he's been caught he's slow, his chin's in there, it's always been in there but he's got no resilience in that chin anymore so if Craig White can do, this is what I think he has to do, I think he has to do what he did to Matt Inman and try and clip him with something and then swarm him if he swarms Diego and puts him against the cage then I can see Diego going down I don't see that happening, I think that Diego bees the aggressive guy that he is, comes out straight away and takes him down now that's where Craig White's maybe you're going into the wheelhouse of Craig White a little bit but Diego Sanchez doesn't get finished when he's on top and he hasn't done for a long time he's a really good jiu-jitsu guy himself we just don't see it because 
Deagle comes forward and just swings like a windmill uh, and it gives you exciting fights. But he has a ground game and he can use it. He showed in the Marcin Hill fight. He showed that a little bit in the Jim Miller fight as well. So that's where I think he wins this fight. I think he uses every bit of experience he's got. I don't think... I think if he goes to the... I, personally, I think in the first round it will go to the ground. Deagle will stay on top. That's the best time for Craig White to catch him. If it goes into two and three, I struggle to see him catching him with something. But in saying that, Craig White has shown that once he goes into the kind of later rounds or he, like even the Mon uh, Montanani fight, that he caught him with a triangle choke and he locked up really quickly, really tight. But for me, I just don't think that someone Diego is going to make a mistake by giving him that. Could happen because Diego is at that that tipping point, and he's maybe already past that tipping point of. Um, given these guys, if this was a couple of years ago, I still think that Dago would beat him. Um, but now's the time for Craig White to really come in here and grasp the opportunity he's got because no matter who it is, Mickey Gall did it last week. Uh, if you've got the opportunity to face Dago Sanchez, you call him out because you're going to make a name off that guy uh, and you're fighting. I've had conversations with people like this. I think he's a legend, personally. Um, fought for a world title, won the Ultimate Fighter, gave us some of the most unbelievable fights. Um, but people are never going to see because he, he was never a world champion. He was never. I think he's a legend. He's definitely going to be a UFC Hall of Famer. And mm. I hopefully once that happens, I want to be in Vegas when he gets inducted because, like I say, I I am a huge fan of Diego Sanchez. He's one of the guys that I've still never managed to meet, and it's kind of annoyed me to this day that I've never been able. And I flew over to uh, his title fight against BJ Penn, and I thought I had an opportunity there, and it was just it was I never got the opportunity, so I've been pissed ever since. But. Um, yeah, that's how I see the fight going. I think he's going to take Craig White down early. I think he, he has to avoid early. Um, maybe getting caught in a triangle choke. or It's just, it's for me to sit here and say that Diego Sanchez is going to give him the opportunity to like um, pull a triangle on him when he's been there with some guys. I don't know. Maybe it's just me being the biased guy I am in this fight. And I am being biased. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. Uh, sometimes I can have an internal conflict with myself making these picks because I am massive fans of fighters and I've got to try and pick against guys that I've supported for years that I've spent money on going to the other side of the world to watch these guys and I'm starting to get better at it but I'm years down the line and I'm really not that much better at it than I was five years ago so um, I, I, this is a, a big step up I think for Diego Sanchez well, eh, is it a step up because he faced Neil Magny? Who knows? I think it's a step up in experience. That's maybe what I'm trying to say. And for me, I, I think Diego's just going to out-experience this dude and just show him... I think it's going to be a big fight for Craig White to learn a lot of things personally as well. Uh, but I'm going to pick Diego Sanchez. I'm going to pick him to win. I think he could stop him. If he, if he gets into the third round, and the way Sanchez works, he could potentially stop him. And we all seen with Diego Sanchez. If fights are close, he seems to get the nod in every single one of them. So uh, I'm going to go... <laughs> I don't don't know how he does it, but I hope Diego wins. Uh, I'm throwing no stank on uh, Craig White because he's a, such a cool dude. Uh, nobody will say a bad word about the guy. But bias pick, maybe yeah, full bias pick. I'm not even going to fucking try and defend myself here. Uh, Diego Sanchez to win the fight and that one there. So uh, yeah, moving on to the FX one card. We start off in the bantamweight division with Jimmy Rivera against John Dodson. Uh, I think it's a risky fight for Jimmy Rivera he had that 20 fight win streak busted and busted viciously against Marlon Marais uh, and he's facing a guy in John Dodson who can crack if he can land that clean shot he can put him down uh, I see I see this being a very 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 close fight and I think that John Dodson has an extremely good chance of getting a huge win for him uh, and potentially pushing Jimmy Rivera further back down the pecking order um, and John Dodson's weird in close fights as well, he, he won that fight with Pedro Munoz, he won that fight he lost that fight to Marlon Marais which was really mm. super close super he close. Got, yeah he could have really got the nod in that one, lost to John Lineker via a very close split, so he fights very close with these guys, when you look at Lineker and Marais, I think Marais is obviously a little bit above those two but they are fairly close mm. In certain bits, but I think the Marais is better. But he he does fight close with these guys, and this is where I'm seeing this one here. Rivera, when you go back and watch his fights, Almeida, he's got some big power. He has wrestling. He has good leg kicks. He showed in the favor fight. 
Um, and it's just an overall super, super well-rounded top five guy in that division. I don't think there's a doubt about that. But he showed that he can get put down. And I just think this fight... It wouldn't surprise me if Rivera gets dropped in this one with, with John Dodson. But it wouldn't surprise me if Dodson maybe takes a knee as well. I see it being super close. I'm going to edge Jimmy Rivera. But honestly, I think John Dodson is a, a extremely live dog here. Um, Rivera's got to bounce back and just get the W any way possible. I was very close to picking John Dodson here, but I'm going to pick Jimmy Rivera. It's you're right because the, the issue with John Dodson is he's not being himself. I I don't know what it is. Personal stuff, fight camp, the team, whatever. He's just not being the John Dodson we know. Like explosive movements. Like he's went up a weight class to Bantamweight, so I would have thought it might actually would have benefited him. No, not having to cut himself that much, he would have a bit more in him, and a bit. I, I he's not the same dude that I I I loved the one twenty five John Dodson. Like I love that dude. Anytime he was on, I was in. I was sold. Now I'm like, if he turns up. Yeah, that dude's a badass, man. Like, he can, he's so quick, he can hit you. And if I'm John, like you said, I would be going straight for Jimmy as soon as possible. I'd be trying to crack him, test that chin, test that nerve, test Jimmy, see where he is with everything. Because Jimmy might be like, yeah, cool, I'm all good. I've heard it, it, it's happened, you know, whatever. And he might be fine, his chin might be okay. He might take it and go, pfft. Bitch, I'm fine. Like I just got caught. I just got caught awkwardly. That's all it was. It was nothing like overly to get uh, to get bothered about. And he might be fine. And I, and that's the problem. That's if John Dodson does that. D will he or won't he? I don't know. Of late, I've not felt confident in seeing that dude back, and I hate it. I hate that it's not. He's not there that uh, these days. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he was just. I don't know if he's the same dude because he lost two title fights and maybe he's just feeling a little bit lost in his way and at Bantamweight he's just not maybe feeling confident enough that he can get a title fight. But I'm going to go with Jimmy Rivera because Jimmy's just so solid all round and he's just a badass dude. I think he can get it. I think he can do it. I think Jimmy can get that win because uh, I just don't know which John Dodson's going to rock up, man. So I'd go with Jimmy as well. Yeah, yeah, close fight. There's a lot of close fights in this one, actually. Moving on, middleweight division, we have a little bit of British interest here. We have Charles Bird, a native of Texas, facing off against Darren, the dentist, Stuart, who's coming off a great performance at UFC Liverpool. How do you see it going? Again, like you said, man, uh, local, uh, local dude fighting a, uh, a Brit. And I think the thing is, again, being local might affect Chris, uh, Charles, sorry, might get in his head, might he might the pressure get to him we don't know we don't know how his head will be on the day but let's take that aside let's look at skill set only and i don't think charles is going to have as much luck getting darren down i think darren has got a super super high confidence especially after that eric spicely fight you know like we said it was a it was a top top performance because eric spicely is a is as bad as spicely can be if he gets you down it i'm telling you now people I, I, no one wants Eric Spicer on top of them. That dude is s legit on top. He's a he's a ninja. Even on his back, you know, he's badass. But he is super dangerous. And Darren showed a patience and power. And he just showed that Charles is going to have his work cut out big time. I think Charles got good striking as well. Don't get me wrong. I think he will shoot in for the takedown. I've, I wonder if he'll set up better, though, than... Um, I, no, he probably, he'll probably be able to set up a bit better than Eric, but I don't know if he'll get him down. I think there might be a bit of confidence in Darren now. He'll have a, a his, his feet will be planted more, so to speak, within the confidence to be in the UFC. Um, oh, Will, your, your camera's gone again, by the way, bro. The audio's all good. It's just the camera uh, just decides to freeze. Apologies, apologies. No, it's all good. It's all right. It's Skype. Don't worry, Skype can be an absolute git sometimes, folks. Um, yeah, so with Charles, man, if he gets Darren down, I think he'll keep Darren down. I think he can keep keep on top of Darren. Um, 
And I think that's where he'll. That's where you want to try and go with Darren Stewart. You don't want to be standing with him because Darren can crack. He's shown that. You know, it is the Marquez fight. He can crack. The dude will hit you hard. And I don't think Bird wants any part of that. I really don't. I think he's going to try his hardest getting down. Uh, he's got better chance in the second and third round when you know they're obviously a little bit more tired, a little bit. Uh, uh, Darren will be a little bit more susceptible to it. Oh, I hate to pick against Darren. I don't think Charles is overly strong in any particular areas. Um, I'm going to go with Darren uh, only because there's not much between the two of them. Super tight fight in my opinion this one as well. Uh, and I think that win that Darren had, that performance, was a level of maturity that we should have seen earlier on. He's shown it now. I think he's going to show it again. I think he's just got just a, a, a nastiness about him to really hurt people. And I think he'll hurt uh, hurt this Charles and get the decision win. But it's it's a tight fight, really is. Yeah, uh, I kind of struggled a little, initially. I kind of struggled with this a little bit. The one thing that stood out to me with Darren Stewart in Liverpool and the what we've seen in the past, especially in the uh, what fight was it? Uh, what was his fight before that? Was it Julian Marquez? Mar Marquez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he fought stupid. He fought with his heart instead of his head. You, you can't, you can't fight with Julian Marquez like that. You need to kind of work around him and and pick your shots and maybe pick your shots for takedowns. And he got caught eventually. He got caught by Carl Roberson as well uh, at UFC Fight Night One Twenty. So he needs to pick and choose. The times to be explosive, the times to be aggressive, and then he has to pick those times where he needs to sit back, evaluate what's gone, and then pick his spots. And I thought he did that against Eric Spicely, and I was like, that was one of the things about UFC Liverpool. I was super chuffed with this, the fact that he got a UFC win. He he didn't go balls out. He picked his he picked his time to 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 go hard, and when he when he did, he ultimately got the finish. And it was one of the better things that I've seen at UFC Liverpool personally to see that guy get a win. Top, top guy. Um, for me here, I think I really like the Fortis MMA guys that come out of America, uh, Texas I should say. Uh, and Charles Bird, is, I don't think he's uh, any better than what Darren Stewart is. I think that mm. he's got... Um, I think he's good in the ground. I think he's really good, and I think he finds a submission. And we've seen that in his couple of fights in the UFC and uh, on the Dana White show as well. And I just wonder if the aggressiveness of Darren Stewart early on plays into the hand of Charles uh, Ch Charles Bird a little bit, because I think that's what he's going to be looking for. He's going to want Darren to come on to him so he can potentially take him down. I think once it goes to the ground. Darren, uh, Darren is squirrely down there. So he, he's, he's, you can control him, but he never stops. He, he will still try and make his way back to his feet. I just think eventually, through some aspect of this fight, I think Charles Bird is going to catch him in the submission. But there is like a seven or eight year age difference in this fight as well. So if he can push this fight into later aspects, and with the pace that Darren Stewart can set as well, he keeps on going and going and going, he could potentially start to, once Charles Bird doesn't get what he wants, could start to mentally break him. Um, so that's kind of how I'm seeing it there. If, if it goes to the ground in the first five to seven minutes, I can maybe see Charles finish him. If it goes late, I think Darren could start to put put it on him and start to beat this guy and and, and potentially put him out because, like you say, Darren has a, a wallop a in him that he can unleash at any time. So for me, I'm going to pick this mission guy here. I would like Darren to win the fight, but uh, I'm aging more towards Charles Bird here, so I'm going to pick him, pick, pick him via submission at the, at the start of round number two in that one there. Moving on, we have the Funk Master, Aljamain Sterling against Cody Stamen, and I'll be honest, when I first heard this fight, I was like Aljo, I'm, I like Aljo in this fight. I think it's a really good fight for him. Then I went back, as you do, you need to watch some of the fights of the, the opponent. And I've kind of, I've went the other way here. I'm actually on Cody Stamen. And I'm a big fan of Aljamain Sterling. I, that's a guy that I've been championing for a long time before he came to the UFC. And uh, I think that he has made improvements. But I think that Cody Stamen has a little bit more, a little bit more to him. And when you look really at his UFC wins, he's maybe got better UFC wins 
than Aljamain Sterling, and he's not been in there for as long. He's beat Brian Caraway, he's beat Tom Dukumwa, who I still think he hasn't shown what he's capable in the UFC of, of what he what he's really is. Um, with probably what we're going to see, Aljo's best win being Henenbrau. Henenbrau. Henenbrau's a a shell of himself, really. But he did whoa, fight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Henan Barrow? Ca- yeah. Like, Caraway? Took him what? Barrow? Yeah. I would say Car- it's like, now I'd, I'd pick Caraway to beat Henan Barrow. Yeah, but that's time. Um, but let's go back. Let's but go back even in time. Be, well, I think I would pick Brian Caraway to beat Henan Barrow. Henan Barrow's not been the same since he, TJ beat the shit out of him. So, no. Uh, but that's just people saying different. That's me saying that I think his wins are better than that. But, Aljo's a tough guy to 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 kind of to get a game plan for because he is so funky. He's yeah. very long, very strong, uh, and like you've seen the Brian Carraway fight. If he gets you in a position like a full Nelson position, it's tough. He puts mm-hmm. you in funky positions. Uh, one of the coolest guys, honestly, Aljo is fucking amazing. He's such a cool yeah. dude, and this is kind of like a bias here that I, I can't pick him. I, 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 did, it, I did it with Diego Laron, but it's like. This is one of these fights that's a little bit more... It stands out to me as being a, a lot closer fight and, and not as much a bias as on Diego, eh, on mm. Aljo as it was with Diego. It's biased on Diego. I'm not even going to try and deny that. But, um, yeah, Cody Stamen, really solid striking. He's not the biggest guy for the division, but he, he's got really good technique. He's got great wrestling, and he's 17-1, and one, so the guy's got a legit record, and he's beat good guys in the UFC... No doubt about it. I think I've picked against him in like pretty much all of his fights, except for the first one. Especially Dukumwa. I definitely picked Dukumwa. You definitely picked Dukumwa. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's another bias there. I should maybe stop. <laughs> um, and it, he really he started off slow in that one. And what was really good in that fight is he he worked his way into the fight and won one one rounds two and three very convincingly. And yeah, then I thought looked, I thought he looked super professional against Brian Carter. Carter was just. He takes a lot of flack and a lot of shit, but he's actually solid, solid professional, a hard guy to face. Um, Aldo's coming off that devastating knockout to Malama Rice with a really solid performance against Brett Johns. Um, and he's going to come out. It's going to be interesting to be here. I think it's who can establish. I think the, the wrestling could cancel each other out. So for me, it's who's the better guy in the feet. With the hands, Aldo swings quite wildly. Um where Cody throws with a lot more technique, a lot more precision. So it's interesting. It's, I'm struggling with this a little bit, but I, I'm leaning more towards Cody Stamen, I think, to win a very close, super close split decision. That's how I'm seeing it. Could go either way. I think it's a pick on betting wise I think right now Cody Stamen is the betting underdog. Not by much, but uh, super close. I'm going to sit back as a fan, watch that fight, and... Um, just see how that one goes. I pref- probably prefer Aljo to win cause, just because I like the guy and I've met him, he seems cool. But I think fighting wise, I think Cody Stamen could match him, could beat him here. So I'm going to go Cody Stamen, split decision. Uh, I'm, I agree. Sterling is such an awesome dude. Great night out with him. Awesome guy. But man, what a horrible matchup. This is for the pair of them. It's, the, the, like Cody, like you say, he doesn't look big for that weight division because all his weight is in his thighs. He's got massive thighs for that weight like he's just like he's like uh, Drew Dober just his fucking tree trunks absolutely massive but again that gets him explosive power and and, and his te- technique for takedowns is just so quick and powerful it's hard to stop them um, but Aljamain sets up his te- his his te- takedowns with his like he says funky striking and because it, it puts people off the kind of way he throws the strikes puts you on certain angles is what's beautiful about his striking is it puts you on a certain angle and your foot in certain places for him to set up particular takes downs it's beautiful to actually watch it when you when you enjoy the fights and you watch them back and you go that's why you've done that combination to set up that take that it's, it's great to watch it um it, it's a clash in styles of wrestling um, they, they've got two different styles and again on a striking it, 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 it's horrible to pick him uh, because Cody could just be very safe, just pick shots, just keep it simple, not even try to do takedowns and try to win the fight just standing. If it, I, I think I think Aljamain, no, 
there's a slight bit of ego in there. He'll want to get Cody down. He'll want to get. He'll want to prove he's the he's a top wrestler. Do you know? He'll want to prove that he can get him down. And I really feel he's going to be trying to hard for to get that. I, I'd like him just to try and throw a bit more kicks in there uh, on Cody. And the thing is, not leg kicks, head kicks. Because you're not that keen to shoot in for takedowns. If it's a head kick, you're more likely to block it. And it's just to keep Cody on his... To keep him aware, to keep him away. If you know, want to shoot in, son, there's going to be some head kicks coming your way. Uh, basically, take, take notes from what Marais did to him, you know. And, and Cody, solid guy, wrestler. Good striking. Good record. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick Sterling. You pick Cody, I'll pick Sterling. It's a horrible one to pick. It really is. Like I know Aljo's been around a while. He's been with some... But Cody is legit people. I think if anyone tries to knock him off or not pay attention to him, they're idiots. But I'm going to pick Aljo because um, you've picked Cody. I'll pick Aljo for the decision win. But it's going to be such a crazy tight fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good fight. Another good fight. And then we're moving on to the featured bout of the FX prelims here. We've got Carla Sparza against the surgeon Tatiana Suarez, former champion in the spars, we should mention. Yeah. Suarez. And this is the big step up for Tatiana Suarez here. Uh, is it you to set this one off, I think it is? It is, yeah, it is. This is kind of like the fight down just below. Mm. Wrestler, both of them, solid wrestlers, uh, against OK striking. Let's say Carla's striking has evolved. I won't, I won't deny that. Her striking's grown. She's got she's got a lot better, and I think the biggest pick me up for her was beating Cynthia Carvalho because Cynthia had a bit of a bit of momentum. UFC were backing her as well. Let's be brutally honest. You know, Paige Van Zandt flopped, so they jumped on a Cynthia straight away, and uh, and and, and I kind of pulled off for it. Yes, she lost to Claudia Cadella, but then again, let's be honest. Split decision, super tight fight. Claudia was it Claudia? No. Carla accused Claudia of Greeson, or was it the other way around? Yeah, I think it was Carla. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, because uh, they were. She was asking for a rematch off the top of my head, if I recall. She's like, "Oh, well, let's do a rematch." That was a cool fight. I could have went either way as well. Yeah, that was a flipping. I, I, and to be fair, I, I pretty much had Claudia all day, but Carla, hey, look, she she looked good. Suarez is a big girl for for uh, strawweight. Powerful girl. Uh, I, I've got a lot of respect for Suarez because of the whole issue she had in the past with coming back from cancer. She, you know, she's got a toughness and a, and a kind of will in her to win. Carla's way more experienced and knowledgeable in, that, in this fight game than uh, Suarez. Big step up for Suarez. But I think Suarez is going to be okay with it. I think she's going to be a bully. I think she's going to overpower Carla. I think she's going to be a big girl. And she's just going to literally just mush her into the ground and just keep her there. And just... Carla's not the greatest on her back. That's one thing that Carla's not overly keen on. On the top, Carla's good. Carla's solid. On her back, she's not the greatest. She's not bad, don't get me wrong. She can, she can produce a sweep or two. But I think Suarez is a bit of a beast, to be honest with you, for this division. I think she'll get. I think in future you might see Suarez go to 125, and but at the moment I think Suarez sits down in that weight class. She'll be a bully, get be able to pin Carla down and just let just lay into it. She has got some nasty ground pound. I like it. She's an aggressive wrestler when she's with striking. I'm gonna go with Suarez. I'm gonna go decision Suarez. Um, and I'm not saying Carla can't win, but I, she might win a round. But I think Carla's gonna get the win. Uh, sorry, um, Suarez, sorry. Yeah, it's that clear step up for Tatiana Suarez. And I, I don't think there's a doubt about it. If she never hurt her neck, I think it was, she was going to the Olympic yeah. to wrestle. I don't yeah. think there's any doubt about that. And she, you can see that with her UFC wins, that the girl's got some legit wrestling. She's got some legit control. She's strong. If you give this girl an opportunity to get something around your neck, you're in deep shit. But she is facing a girl who has won titles. She's a People, I think, forget she's a former UFC champion, the mm. first ever in the strawweight division, and that's something in, you can't take to as well. Kick it, ass! You can't take that away from a girl like Esparza, and she, I mean she's faced the, the who's who of the division. Uh, your Roses, your Joanna, your Claudia's. Um, she's so yeah, face them all, yeah, 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 she has. She's faced the majority of the top girls that we've had in that division, 
Uh, I thought after the the Marcos win a uh, loss, which she I thought she kind of won. I thought she might kind of feed off in, in insecurities a little bit and um, wins over Morose. I thought the Calvillo fight. I think I actually picked the Spars on that one. I'm not sure. No, I didn't actually think about it now. Um, but she fought a great fight. I thought she fought a great fight against Claudia Gadelia. I thought she could have got her hand raised. I thought her striking looked so much better. Um, and her, her grappling for the women's side is really, really good. To me, I think she's outmatched grappling-wise in this one here. I think she's got enough to maybe potentially stop the shot. But I think that Suarez is too strong. And it's just going to be too dogged and too determined to get it to the ground. And then from there... It's trying to get back to your feet, and I don't think she's going to be able to get back to her feet against this girl. I think she is the bigger girl. She's like five or six inches taller. She's going to be more burlier than what Esparza is. I think early on, Esparza, it be interesting to see if Suarez wants to come out and grapple straight off or wants to show that her striking is improving because it wouldn't surprise me if she's one of these girls as she prolongs her career that she maybe actually starts to establish power mm. and natural power as well yeah. because she is a bigger girl for that division. Um, but ultimately I think she's going to shoot and she's going to want to take this to the ground because I think she knows that if she goes to the ground with her control and her strength it's going to be hard for girls to, to beat her down there so I think that she will stop the former champion here I think it's going to be a big win for Suarez I think she's going to take her to the ground I think she's just going to dominate and then eventually she's going to find a submission so for me I'm going to pick a, a submission at some point in this fight for Tatiana Suarez there so that's the prelims. Seems like we've been talking about that for a long time. I think it was good I fight. Know, yeah. Uh, good and we're fights. Up, are good fights. Yeah, yeah onto the main card now, and we're starting off in the welterweight division with Abdul Razak Al Hassan against Nico Price. And this is me, right? Sorry, guys. I'm, yeah. I'm lagging a little bit. Quarter to one. Been working all day. And I'm starting to flag a little bit. So I'm like, is it you or is it me? And it's some, something stupid, simple like that that's kind of catching me up. But, but we're doing this because we love you people at yeah. quarter one in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, li- I like the matchup. But it should be in a favour of you is another, another thing altogether. But uh, <laughs> six and a half a dozen, um, whether, whether, whether that should happen. But I like the fight, I must admit. I think it's a... This has to potentially be a barn burner of a fight. Maybe that's the reason they put it on the pay-per-view with uh, Al Hassan and Price here. Mm. Price, I think, is going to get a lot of love coming off that win last time out against Randy Brown, where he's off his back and he knocks the guy out being on his back with kind of hammer fists, which is weird. Yeah. It's weird. weird, like cups him with his foot. Yeah. It's just weird, so, yeah. But Nico Price, to his credit, is one of those guys who's... He's, like, very funky, a little bit yeah. weird. I watched some of his, because um, he fought back in July, so it wasn't that long ago. You watched his interview for that fight week, and the guy's just, he's wired differently. He he left American Top Team, he's, he's established his own gym, and I thought to myself, that's a bit of a red flag to me, but then I heard he was never really a big part of ATT. He was always in the littler gyms outside of Florida, um, around uh, Coconut Creek. But you look at him, he's got four UFC wins, um, five UFC wins if you count the, the no contest which he popped for for the manager Um but he's just a solid dude everywhere good wrestling, very aggressive got some mission skills um, and he's got some big power as well the big thing here is he's probably got a guy I think is more aggressive than what Nico Price is in Al Hassan who is just he barrels forward do this stupid power um, he comes from a judo background so when I think of that there, I think that Price eventually could get him down once al is kind of depletes a little bit. Um, but initially I think he's going to be hard to take down. Akhmadov took him down. So that's the fight you've got to look at. If he can take him down, maybe Nico has an opportunity there. Uh, knocked out Sabah Hamasi back to back. Brutal. Brutal. Brutal in both fights. Now maybe the first one was stopped. A little premature. I didn't think so. No. Then he went out there and got himself a free fifty grand by doing it again <laughs> um, against Tomasi. Beat shot. But when you look at it, his wins in the UFC are Charlie Ward and Sabah Hamasi. So it's not really nothing to write, write home about. And any time he's faced anybody that I think is fairly decent in Akhmadov, he lost. Uh, but it was close in being saying that. I think he gave, gave himself a good account in that fight. Uh, Price is dangerous. 
I think he, he's very uh, unpredictable with some of the things that he does. But for me, I just think the power of Al Hassan is eventually going to show here. Um, and once I think Price is going to come out, he's going to shoot. He's going to realise that he can't maybe get him down, and then it's going to escalate into a firefight. And for me, I'm going to go with the guy with the, the most power, um, and he's got speed. He's just a big, powerful brute of a guy. Um, but if the fight goes on late, I think Nico Price comes into it a little bit more. For me, I'm going to pick Al Hassan. I think he's going to catch the chin. And I think he's going to knock out uh, Nico Price in the first round. Al Hassan was brought into the UFC to lose to Charlie Ward. <laughs> and he's now fighting on a pay-per-view card. Let's just put that in perspective, <laughs> folks. That was nasty, wasn't it? Oh. That Ward fight, that was fucking nasty. I remember that. Because <sighs> we were at that card. We were yeah, at we... that event, yeah. yeah. Oof, gosh. And we were like... Yeah, we were there googling Al Hassan because we were like, "Who the fuck is this dude?" Like, like he came out, like literally, they dug him out of the ground to find him to fight someone to try to lose to, and Charlie got smoked. Don't worry, it was a great thing to watch. Um, yeah, that is the thing, Al Hassan. Like, he didn't have like for prior to that after that match. I think every fight before that didn't go more than sixty seconds. Like, the judo background has just brought power into his hips. And his talk is just ridiculous. Man, Nico has to be on his toes. He cannot stand still. Because if Al Hassan cracks in that first 60 seconds, Nico is going to be on chicken dance and then he's going to be getting smashed. End of. Nico, yeah, like I say, he's, he's a bit of a weird one with, with his technique, his movement, his strikes. If anything, you just want to try and jab come out of range let al hassan do a little burst and then miss and then go again nico's not that kind of fighter though he's not that great at fire iq he's not a bad fighter he's got some good techniques on some things some aspects possibly what i'd do is if i was nico do the jab keep out of range but ultimately try and clinch up straight away get al hassan up against the cage his back on the cage grind it make his arms get filled with lactic acid, slow them, you know, fill those shoulders with blood, make his arms heavy so when he's punching, it's slower, there's a bit less pop in them. And that's, I would spend five, I'd spend my first round on that cage if I was me, if I was Nico. So at least in the second and third, I've got Al, Al Hassan who maybe has to charge up before he, you know, charge his energy batteries before he throws a punch and maybe he can get him down. I don't know if he'll be able to do it though, bro. I think Al Hassan's going to crack him. And Nico has been cracked and put on his backside. And I think Al Hassan is going to do it. I, 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 honestly, I don't think Al Hassan is anything amazing as a welterweight. I just think Nico's nothing. He's not going to ever be anything amazing. I think Nico's one of those middle of the middle of the kind of range welterweights. Uh, and I think Al Hassan's going to be the same kind of guy. Well, when Al Hassan goes up the ranks, he'll get put back down again. But I think Al Hassan gets his win. I think he puts. Nico to sleep. I think he just cracks him so hard. TKO and knockout first round. Yeah. I think, like I said, it's one of those fights that could end uh, early or it could mm. be a little bit more um, predictable late. But it still is, a, like you say, I never really thought about the judo hips, the power that kind of comes from there. So, so yeah, um, we're both going to Al Moving on to straw weight division, we have Jessica Andraj, Karlina Kovalkiewicz. Solid fight. Legit solid fight, bro. Legit, uh, look, I love both of them. They are two fighters I'm always up for watching. Um, I'm, I'm going to put it straight out there, straight away. I'm going to pick Andraj. Uh, the reason being, Karolina Kovalkiewicz striking is very, very precise, very accurate, very good fundamental, solid, solid. But Jessica Andraj is just a bull. A bull. And I think she's just going to get Carolina down. I think she's going to get her down on her back. I think she'll get her down. And that's where the fight's going to be for the three rounds. I think Jessica will be wanting to stand up on the feet too much. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that she can't stand with Carolina. Not at all. I'm not saying that at all. But why bother when you don't need to? When she could strike to get in, to grab her, to get her down, and just keep her on her back. And I don't think that it's something that I don't think it's not that I think Carolina can't get up or or stop it. I just think Jessica is a fucking 
gorilla strength that she will get her down. Like, I want to see Suarez and Andrade fight because I want to see who the hell's going to get each other down. Do you know, I want to see... That's what I want to see. But I, um, I think, yeah, I, I want to see here um, Jessica Andrade just get her down for three rounds and just, you know, move position to keep active, ground and pound, move, and, and it's just going to be rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Um, there'll be a bit of striking, obviously, in, in the whole fight, but I don't think there'll be that much, and I think Jessica will just get that, free, get that win under her belt, and, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I see, and then obviously I think she'll get possibly another title shot then from that. Yeah, it's, I think it's a very tough fight for Kovalkiewicz when you see, mm. when, when Andrade shows up, and it's not very often that she doesn't show up, but when she does, she's a, an absolute wrecking ball of a fighter. That fight with Gedalia is still scary to watch. Yeah. Um, with her output, with her strength, with her brutality. Um, and she's, what she is very good at, she's very good at cutting off the cage. She did it against Joanna. Joanna was just smart, though. She picked and popped and was faster than mm. what I think Kovalkiewicz really is. Now, she's going to have to have the same game plan here because... She's not going to initiate no takedowns or clinch battles with Eskan Drive. She's going to want to be on her bike, shooting at distance, trying to catch her with shots. And she's going to, Jessica Andrade is going to be swinging back at the same time. So it's going to be a very, very tough fight for Carlina. I just struggle to see how she wins the fight. I really do. It's one of those fights that's kind of crystal clear. But then I'm trying to not disrespect Carlina. Um, because she is one of the top fighters in that division, but when you look at the skill set which Jessica Andrade had, has, uh, where I think that Kovalkiewicz is good, but I don't think she's elite. I think Joanna is elite mm. um, in that division. I don't think that uh, in that division. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, I just see Andrade cutting off, putting Kovalkiewicz against the cage, getting the takedown, and literally throwing this girl about. And then once she's down there, it's brutal ground and pound all the way. Um, I could possibly see Andrade getting a finish here if she if she can get her down early uh, and establish. I think that Carolina is going to literally be running uh, away from this girl eventually, and I think she's just going to get caught. So Andrade is going to be my pick in that one there. Uh, we're moving on to the flyweight, uh, flyweight division, stupid one. featherweight division. It's a beat Magomed Sharipov against Brandon Davis, who's got the balls to step in here. In about 10 days' notice to face this guy after Yaya Rodriguez pulled out, which I was I was super looking forward to that fight because I thought Yaya was actually... I thought he was going to give... Honestly, I think I was going to pick Yaya in that fight. Sitting here, I think, looking at that, I was going to pick Yaya Rodriguez. Um, but uh, that's me just saying that now. Maybe it was, if it, the fight was still official, and maybe I'd change my pick a little bit, but who knows. Um, Brandon Davis coming on here in short notice. I think he fought... The week before Liverpool, I want to say, because he yeah, wasn't. He did. He did because like, he came and then he came over and cornered yeah, Jason. Knight. Yeah, so he lost to Enrique Barzola. Um, Barzola just what super super game plan. He's a tough tough guy to face. Um, went over Stephen Peterson, which I thought was the type of fighter that he needs. Is going to stand there. He's not going to move around and he's going to take shots mm. uh, at will. Kyle Bochniak was a close fight. We saw him against Austin Arnett, which was a, a unanimous decision victory on the show. But this is a step up. I think Barzola is really good, but I think in talent and future progression, I think that Zabit is the guy that a lot of people are looking at. I thought Bochniak actually opened up a, a, a few things that could potentially... Hurts a beat later on in his UFC career. I thought the Yaya fight was a perfect fight for him to see. Is he going to sink? Is he going to mm. swim? Mm. Uh, and a lot of people were super high on him to beat Yaya, um, where the odds were like plus 400, was probably going to be plus 500. And betting, betting guy like I am, uh, I'm going to take a shot on a dog like Yaya who could instantly put your lights out like that. Mm. So, But in this matchup, I think it's tailor made for the beat to just have have his way with Brandon Davis and Brandon Davis is going to come in here for a paycheck he's probably going to get paid a little bit more than he did uh, than his last fight for the simple fact he's coming in here against an absolute killer Brand Brandon Davis is he's a solid solid striker but I think Zabit is just better and he's more dangerous 
got a lot of spinning techniques. Um, Brandon's going to have to establish really, really early uh, and get the respect of Zabit. I don't see it. When you look at Zabit's grappling as well, very, very good, very technical. Uses He frames off really well. And when you're a guy who's massive for that division, he, he, finds, he finds it very easy to to get to the ground and manoeuvre you around because he is stronger. He uses those frames for, for leverage and he moves you around. Um, Zabit is going to win the fight, whether it's going to be via submission. In fact, that's what it is. It's going to be via submission, I reckon. I think he's going to submit Brandon Davis here. I think he beat him up in the feet, get a clinch, take him down and get a submission win there. So, uh, submission victory for Zabit Magomed Sharipov. Nice. I'm going to go uh, Brendan to lose. <laughs> to lose. I, 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 I love like met Brendan, lovely guy. He is doing the. He's doing that. I've got the big cojones. Let's do it. You want to fight? I'll fight anyone. Jason Knight is the same. Him uh, like Brendan Davis is the striking coach for Jason Knight. That whole uh, from the out the train bound bell truck miss it. They are just game. Those dudes are flat out game to fight anyone anywhere. And Brendan's showing it there. He's like, I don't give a crap. I'll do it. You'll get paid discretionary a little bit there. Thanks very much for stepping in, Sean Oates. Because I can guarantee you, no one wanted this. No one up in the rankings. Anyone near? John Lennon wanted it. <laughs> that was that was amazing. The fact yeah. that John Lennon was like, I'll do it. I don't give a... I, I, like, I, I wanted to see it because the height thing would have been amazing. Uh, and plus, John Lineker, as much as a douchebag as he can be, uh, down like missing weight so much at flyweight, I was, I was, I was like, I love you for saying that. I love you for saying that, John. You got fans, even more fans, being gangster, just going, I don't give a fuck. I'll fight one fifty five as a one seventy. He doesn't care what weight class you're in. He's amazing. But to beat, too much to offer on the feet for Brendan. Too much variety. He's too unpredictable. And again, like you said, even if Brendan does catch the beat a few times, the beat can just get, get him down with a very good wrestling and just stay on top of him. I'm going to go finish for the beat on the feet. Mm. He's going to catch him with one of those unorthodox crazy kicks. And I think that's what's going to do. I think body shot is what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking like a body shot's going to end him, like a liver shot to, and that's going to get the win. I don't know why. Don't ask. I want to go with that crazy, weird, precise prediction. But first, uh, probably maybe first, second round, body shot, boom. Mm. So we're moving on to the main event, uh, the co cool main event, I should say. Um. With the women's flyweight title being defended for the very first time as Nico Montano has decided to come back and is facing a very tough opponent and former title challenger who could honestly be the champion. And bullet Valentina Shevchenko. Go lead us on. Well, rest in peace, Nico. Uh, uh, it was it was a great title reign. <laughs> uh, honestly, oh my gosh! I, look, I, I know there's girls that have trained with Nico, and they said, "Oh, she's she's really good. She's going to surprise people." No, she's really not. Like, she's really not, folks. There is no way, any way, that she has developed enough skills to come close to what Valentino can do. All right? And if, think about it. Valentino could handle Amanda Nunes. I'm not being funny. Nico is a walk in the park. I, I, I feel it's... I'm not knocking what Nico did. She went and dealt with fighter. She went and had a fight. She did what she had to do. She couldn't beat Roxanne Modaferri. If anything, she got lit up by Roxanne Modaferri on the feet. Roxanne doesn't light people up on the feet. She doesn't... I don't think I've ever seen Roxanne land that many head punch, headshots in a fight. I, I legit... I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen Roxanne land that many standing shots. Uh, Nico just showed that she hasn't got great footwork. Her, her range, her distance, managing her range isn't that great. Her head movement doesn't exist. Her, her, her defense isn't that great against an absolute sniper in, in Valentina. I, just don't, I, I feel awful trying to find something good about Nico, but I find hard. Like 
she won't get the takedown. Valentina's got a very good takedown defense and can get you down, and she's a ninja on her back. So, I, I just don't, I, I don't know, I, I don't even know why Nico, uh, people think Nico's going to win. I, I, I'm, only people are going to say that are people that train with her because they're just being supportive, but it's Valentino's title to win. Like, Shevchenko is going to reign the featherweight division. End of. She, there is no one in that division right now who I could see beating Valentino Shevchenko. End of discussion. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I mean, the UFC, yeah, maybe spitballing here, but they want someone like a Shevchenko to have the belt because she has a little bit more, you can build a little bit more than you can Nico Montano. I even know... Nico went through the show and she won her fights and to me I think she you look at her record it stays four and two I count that seven and two um, because she won those fights and she beat them over girls who are in the UFC who've won UFC fights so I know it's not the most deepest division regarding that and a lot of the girls are kind of fighting each other they were on the show but uh, she still won the fights and she beat Roxanne Mod Modafferi who who has kind of turned her career around, looks a lot better, um, but still you saw aspects of her game there that were ready to be capitalised upon and you've got someone as good as Valentina who's just, she's shown she's good grappling, her striking is her main point of um, any fight, she's very technical, she's very crisp. That that last fight against Priscilla Cacciera was an absolute brutal fight to kind of watch should have been stopped far earlier um, but for me I think that Nico is actually going to show up here and fight above her level against a girl I think we haven't really seen much from Nico let's be honest we've seen her take girl, girls down and, and just kind of dominate and win fights through there I think she's going to raise her performance here and at least give Valentina a fight but I still see it, I still see it being super uh, one-sided but I think she is going to show that she's better than what she is it's hard to say because we haven't really seen all that much maybe four or five fights um, I'm going to go Valentina I'm going to pick her to win via decision a very very unanimous 50-44 decision for Valentina Shevchenko when you look at Valentina she's finished one fight one fight again, and that was against that Priscilla chick. Um, even when you go back to her kickboxing day, she's not an outright kind of finisher, and it's the only fight that I think she's finished in the UFC off the top of my head. With but, striking, she's won a submission. Um, oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. What's her name? Juliana Pena. Yeah. So, yeah, she did. So she's got skills wherever it goes. Um, and back in her early days, like way back in two thousand five, which is fucking years ago, I can't believe it's that far back um, she won a lot via submission very early on I just think that Nico might actually just show us a little something but I still think she gets completely outclassed here and just Valentina, just it's the A fighter and, and just completely puts it on I think she could finish if she wanted to but I don't know, I've got a funny feeling that Nico might fight above her level uh, but I could be talking about my RC and she could get finished inside the first three rounds so yeah for me, I'm going to go, uh, Nico was going to say that, uh, Valentina to win via decision. Like an absolute bludgeoning on the scorecards, like 50-44, 50-43, would not surprise me at all. Okay, so we're moving on to the main event of the night. We have uh, the defending welterweight champion in Tyron Woodley facing off against the gorilla Darren Till. In a fight, I'll be honest with you, I did not think after UFC Liverpool that Dan Till would get a title fight in his next fight. Not one bit whatsoever. Um, really interesting fight. And honestly, I'm still struggling where to go with the with the with the pick a little bit. Um I'll put it out there that I thought I picked Wonderboy to beat Till in Liverpool. And being in Liverpool and watching that fight, like I usually have a good read on fights. I have no fucking clue how to read that fight when I was watching it. I thought it could have been 49 46 Woodley, uh, Woodley um, Wonder Boy, or it could have been the other way for Darren Till. And I was baffled by it. And we were standing after the fight, and 
I was like, who won that fight? I was like, and it wasn't the greatest main event we've ever seen. It was it was a chess match. There wasn't much in it. The fifth round knockdown to me was the biggest talking point of the whole fight. That probably just edged till to get that fight personally for me. But when I come back home and watched it, and then I watched it again this week, that was close. It was a very close fight. It's little, little, little things. And to me, probably Wonderboy could have got the nod in that fight. Um, but it was super, super close. When you look at Darren Till as a fighter, great, great, great striking, very dangerous striking. You can't go in there and he's, he's very measured and he's very pinpoint with his striking. You can't go in there and just go at him because if you do, you could catch a big shot and you could be staring at the lights. Um, I think you have to go back to his early days in the UFC to really um, find the holes in his game a little bit. The funny thing is, I really liked him early on in his UFC career. I thought he's definitely winning that fight. Definitely winning that fight. And I picked him to win those fights. The last couple of ones, when I thought he's had the step up in competition, I've went against him. And he's shown... I should have seen the Cowboy one, because Cowboy is ripe for someone like Darren Till. Um, but the Wonderboy one, beating someone as legit as Wonderboy and kind of doing that over five rounds, to me, is a very, very big asterisks in your side to say that you can don't have to be aggressive you can play a chess match and win a fight via that against probably the guy maybe the most ultimate chess player in that division and someone like uh, wonder boy but then you go back and i know i shouldn't really bring this this fight up because it's like three years ago it's nicholas dalby and nicholas dalby gets full mount on darren till darren till did blow his fucking shoulder out though so yes i was about to say that try stopping that and try fighting with a blown shoulder so it's like mm. um yeah it's that's another asterisk you put in there because he did get mounted by nicholas dalby but he did do it when he had a, his shoulder hanging off the bone pretty much yeah um, <laughs> dalby yeah kept lifting his arm up after lifting that. His arm. Even, yeah. even when he said i've dislocated my left arm he still yeah. raised his arm i thought i can't i thought it's brilliant i thought it was amazing until he's like yeah whatever i mean i'm too much <laughs> pain I'm, I'm too much shocked to even feel his pain <laughs> yeah that was a great fight by the way as well oh so, yeah it was um, crazy but then you move over to, to t wood tyron woodley is slowly putting himself out there as one of the best welterweights. He came out this week and said he is the best welterweight. Now, he's a champion and he has to be confident and he's got every right to be confident because he's got that built and he's kept it for nearly two years. In fact, more than two years. Yeah. yeah. Over, over over two years. And he's beaten good fighters in doing so. Um, big, big power. Like, it was a lot of people were talking about the size differential. Um, I still think the, the weight cut is a big thing for Darren Till. And I know people are like, oh, but he had things on in Liverpool and maybe he did, maybe he didn't. He looked like he probably did. But um, he's he's a huge, huge guy. That weight cut is not going to be pleasant. Like the fact he's over in America, so he doesn't have to go over there later or like early next week, mm. get adjusted. So he's been at the PI. They've got everything there to help you get that, that weight down uh, healthily. Um, but Woodley, to me, is a really... He doesn't get the plaudits that he deserves. He's a, he's obviously got a big power. He's got some of the most brutal knockouts we've had in the division. Maybe not since he's got the belt, because when he got the belt, he knocked out Robbie Lawler viciously. Since then, he's fought a little bit safe. Went after Wonderboy in the first fight. Very close draw. Um, then just fought very smart against Wonderboy. He did what he had to do. Damien Meyer did what he had to do. I like fighters that can fight to a game plan, are smart, and also have the attributes that he's got with, with defining power, He's got wrestling. Don't really see that all too much. Showing that he's got great takedown defence. To say that Maya was reaching from miles away and he was reading that. Um, what Darren Till is going to want to do here is back this guy up and put him against the cage like Nate Marquardt did. Nate Marquardt knocked out Tyron Woodley. And Till is a bigger guy than Nate Marquardt. He's a fucking huge, huge dude. That has to be his game plan. And I think he has to... I Personally, I think he has to take out... Well, maybe take out Woodley early, but in saying that, he fought five rounds, but I think that someone like Woodley is going to throw more, is going to present more problems that what, well, than what Wonderboy does, because Wonderboy didn't really throw all too much in that fight and still won rounds by throwing very, very little. If Woodley just does a little bit more, mixes it in, I think he could have a successful night. Uh, the fights got down to pretty much a pick-em, betting-wise. 
um, which is interesting. And I think the champion is probably going to be the underdog by fight time. So the last two fights I've picked against Darren Till, and I'm going to continue the trend here. I'm going to pick Tyron Woodley to win the fight. Um, I just think that Woodley will fight smart and avoid the power shots and um, just avoid the Darren, Till, Tar Darren Till striking. Like I say, I'm super surprised that this fight's even put together because I thought that Till had to win one more fight and Colby went and won that, the, the interim belt, which mm. ultimately would have made the fight, which would have been interesting. Um, but for me... I think Tyron Woodley is just a little bit. I don't know. I, I just think it's a close fight for me. I think Woodley is just a smart fighter. He is old. He's like 36, 37. So the time is now for someone like Till to step in there and win the belt. But is he going to defend that belt? I don't see him defending that belt once if he gets it. I just don't know whether he really wants to be at welterweight anymore. So um, I'm going to go with Tyron Woodley. I think he could knock him out. I think more likely he's going to win via decision. So I'm going to pick. T would to win via decision. I think he dominates late on in this fight. Okay, there's a lot in it. There's a lot in the fight. Uh, there's a lot of aspects. So, Tyron Woodley coming from so shoulder surgery, mm. got the all clear, and the UFC pretty much were like, right, defend your belt, pretty quick. Uh, like he had a, a short fight camp, or he felt like it was a short fight camp for eight weeks or something, like straight back in. And um, that for me is like a bit of a little red flag. I'm like. What's his conditioning like? How is his shoulder? How's it gone through training? Uh, then I look at, well, he is training with Duke Rufus, so Duke Rufus will manage him properly, training with legit dudes like Mike Rose, Belial, all those kind, or Ben Asker, all the top guys there as usual. So he's got a great, Dean Thomas as well. So he's got a great circle of guys and people around him to help, to help him out. Um, age, bang, that starts to play. Like the Nate Marquardt fight is something I watched as well because I wanted to really see a lot in that. And, and something I've learned from that fight and as well is other fights, especially the Wonder Boy fight. The Wonder Boy fights are one to watch because that's a similar. T T Till and Thompson are similar in their styles, but Till has more pop and has a bit more of an output. Wonder uh, 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 Woodley doesn't move his head. He's got no head movement. Like, I don't know if it's because his traps are so big, his head can't move. But he, has, <laughs> he hasn't got much head movement. He just cocks up, ready, and just stays there, ready to just explode out and just burst it out of power. One thing that Darren Till's got, like Thompson, beautiful counter-striking. You know, he will take a step back, and as you're stretching in and overextended for the shot and missed, Pops that left in, just cracks it in. He, um, my, that's my worry with, uh, it, with Woodley. Is, I think he'll have a tough time if he wants to get uh, Till down. Because Till is huge. Like we said, he is massive. I've wrestled with Till. He's massive. I've tried to double leg him. He's, his thighs, oh, his power is ridiculous. The dude is so big for that weight class. And I was putting... I was going pretty hard to get that takedown. He's got Mike Grundy there training with him, who is a Commonwealth Games wrestler, like medaled, medaled Commonwealth Games wrestler, uh, training with him the, like for years, they're training him for years. So he's got a very good knowledge and understanding of the wrestling side of things. So he's not, it's not something unknown to him. I would like to see a little bit more output in Woodley in this fight. Uh, sorry, not Woodley, so uh, Till, because I think he can out, just outpace Woodley, Woodley doesn't have a great gas tank. If you put the pressure on him, you put that, you keep him on his back foot. He doesn't like going backwards. He doesn't like taking, like, he doesn't like having to exert so much energy all the time. He likes to just build up that energy, burst. Build up that energy, burst. If you just keep, just keep knocking, keep chipping, you stop him building that one up. I, I'd love to see Till bother to use his jab more. He doesn't use it enough. If Till could just jab out more, just and just when 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 uh, Woodley comes out with those bursts, and just get that footwork away, pop that shot in, throw in a powerful leg kick or head kick, he could really cause Woodley problems. Woodley, he really needs to go and get Till down. He needs to get Till down. End of like get Till down. He's too he's too much of a danger on the feet. Why waste it? If you're a great wrestler, use it. I'm gonna go Till. Yeah, I've, I've watched the footage too much. And I just think if Till can make weight, it will help. 
And people again, people talk about it, but he didn't. He hasn't missed weight just once, folks. He's missed it several times. So and it, he's missed. He weighed in at 176 pounds in one fight. That's not a little bit off. It's pretty. How much was the Woodley one he weighed in at as well? I think that was like 174, was it? I think. I'm not boy. Yeah, was that 174 or something? 174. I think it's 174 in the second attempt. Yeah, 174, and then yeah, he's weighed 176 in the past, and, and he's he missed weight. I think he's missed weight three times in the UFC. I think it is. Um, he has to hit 170 as well. He yeah. has to hit 70 on the dot, so he's not not like this one pound extra. So it's about yeah. one pound. So so he, he looks good in the in the pictures I've seen. I'm sure the PI would be like, look, we'll be doing everything they can because that yeah. dude is not going to be making 170. I've said it like last time. I can't see him making 170 much longer. He's just growing out of that body. Like Paddy Pimlet in Cage Warriors, he grew out of 145 and has to do 155. Sometimes I think he'll be way better at middleweight. I think he's going to be way better. He's going to kick so much ass at middleweight. Can't wait for him to go there. But I think he'll get Woodley because Woodley's got some negatives going into this. The time off, you know, he's not going to be, his timing's going to be off, sharpness fitness everything there's a lot of going into that that kind of play a factor for me he's a smart fighter i agree but till likes to pressure people keep them against the cage we see it we know what he's like he's got a he's got an aura of confidence when he's in there as well as like he's a, he eggs you on pops you he's got good management of his range i can just i can legitimately see till cause woodley nightmares like a mark what like a like a wonder boy slash mark what where there's a bit more pop in his shots. There's a bit more strikes. Look at the shots that Woodley la Woodley landed loads on Woodley, loads. He's there to get hit, Woodley. You, if you can crack him hard, it's an like Marquardt did. It causes him a nightmare. You just get f past the first few minutes of Woodley's explosive power. Explosive power. You start to then stop picking away. So I'm gonna go with the man Darren Till. Hashtag it's coming home. Yeah. Ah, enough of that. Uh, but like, and saying that until like the one thing we'll say, um, you UFC Liverpool open workouts, like th there was fans everywhere at the end of that, and the dude stayed for every single guy. Yes, uh, that wanted that picture. I don't know how many it was. Maybe I want to say a couple of hundred at least. Easy, yeah. Um, and he stayed for every single one. Went yeah. up, I went down the line. Um, and, and, and back. When there's and back. back again. Yeah. He was brilliant, um, and that was like there was a weird week down in Liverpool. I really enjoyed it, but it was like sketchy as anything when he was missing weight, and uh, we didn't know whether the fight was going to take place. And mm. um, but eventually it did, and um, chess match of a fight. But there we go. You're going with Till. I'm going with Woodley. Uh, if you want people, Team Coy Bone, who is his gym, they do prize gives prize prizes all the time on our twitter account mm -hmm. so it's worth going on at folks to have a chance to win it for example um you got a darren till ufc top here which i won i only edited it for a giggle to help promote the to promote it and <laughs> i weirdly won it signed you signed jersey mm -hmm. folks get on it you know it's worth doing definitely yeah. it's, get on it for, like, people win prizes you know why not yeah no so so that's got us for UFC 228. Really solid card it's going to be next week over there in Texas. Uh, and then we're back for UFC Russia, mm -hmm. which is interesting. The UFC's first joint to Russia. Then I think we've got a break of one week. Then we're one week. One no, 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 we haven't. That's a lie, actually. Or was it the week after that? In Brazil. So there, there's one week break somewhere, yeah, isn't there? Yeah, it's after, it's after UFC Sao Paulo, after yeah. Manuel Santos, because then we lead into Conor McGregor. Yes. Habib Nurmagomedov, which yes, we both, yes. we've talked about, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're mm. going to uh, we're going to do a couple of shows beforehand, thinking um, or saying how does Khabib win, how does Conor win, mm. different angles as they approach the fight, so on, so on, and then we'll obviously we'll have our full card breakdowns for that. So keep an eye on bets. that. Thing. Yeah, bets. There. So I've only got one bet so far, and it's Diego Sanchez plus two hundred. <laughs> Um, that line to me that's I, good that's I good think off. Uh, I think that Craig White probably deserves to be the, the favourite but uh, not as far as that so no. that's where I'm with that um, I, I haven't really looked into much I think Cody Stamen's one that interests me a little bit Tyron Woodley's one that interests me a little bit um, and there was a parlay I looked at a little bit 
but it was a little bit blown out. I can't remember what it was now. But that's kind of where I'm looking. But we're still like nine days out from, well, eight days now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm probably not going to make anything over the weekend. It's going to be early into next week. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So that's us for UFC 228. We're going to be back for UFC Russia um, probably uh, today's Thursday. So it'll be next Sunday. We'll probably make the show. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. But at 270, like I keep harping on, gets to 300 as soon as we can. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, we'll be back. Other things. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher or something. I don't know. We're all over the place. So go go and listen to us there um, on your preferred playlist or whatever it is. Your platforms is what I'm trying to say there. Um, and we, we appreciate all the, the love and support because it's shown. Shout out to Chips again. DraftKings. Yes. Jesus Christ, that guy's a, a legend. He absolutely kills it. Made some hellish money. Um, so Chips, if you're listening, brother, um, congratulations again. And uh, hope you listen in and take some more of our output. And hopefully you go on and win loads more money because uh, yeah. you obviously so, yeah. got it. So well done, Chips. Uh, so we are back uh, the week after. We'll see you very, very soon. Take care. We're out.